solar frickin' roadways? No, that was always a dumb idea, but there's better ones. Let's talk about those. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. It's technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels, smart microprocessing interlocking hexagonal solar unit. So one of the big complaints I hear about solar is where on earth are we gonna put all the solar panels? And the answer is put them wherever you want, man. We've got endless amounts of space. Now the solar frickin' roadways idea was incredibly stupid for you know all the reasons. It was like a child's idea of a great science fiction plot, but uh, absolutely no part of it worked. You can't drive over it, it costs too much, maintenance is a nightmare, the glass absolutely will break, it, you can't get the power moved to the place, it doesn't have enough energy to melt snow like it promised, it doesn't have enough energy to light up like it promised, it was just plain stupid. And frankly, I think a scam. Albeit one that's supported by an awful lot of artists' impressions. I mean, your bullshit radar should have been twitching from the second that they claimed that they had this working solar roadways prototype, but curiously never showed us how much power it generated. Like, really, if you've actually got a working prototype, well, that's great. Just show us how much power it generates per unit area. Or maybe something simple, like having it run a kettle. The issue should have been further brought home when they only showed the LEDs working at night. Hi, we're Scott and Julie Brusaw, the co-inventors of Solar Roadways. And from above, not the angle you would usually look at these things in the road. And we've seen it because they tried to make a version for just a, a, a bicycle path and that didn't work. And they tried to make it for just a little walk area that nobody actually even walks on. Still didn't work. Okay. So where are we going to put solar panels? Because, well, land's at a premium, man. We've got to put it somewhere. Well, look around you, man. Look around. What is all this? Uh, pretty sure that's giant solar panels. They're right up here. It looks fantastic. I mean, you've got shade for your car. You've got power coming in. It's a win for everybody. And in case you hadn't noticed, this uh, Walmart parking lot eh, is still usable as a Walmart parking lot. So where's the solar panels going to be? Everywhere! At your house! Everywhere! Why wouldn't it be? Every panel has a series of LED lights on the circuit board that can be programmed to make landscape designs, warning signs, parking lot configurations, whatever. The roads would be marked with LED lights instead of painted markings, and parking lots would be able to reconfigure parking in an instant. Well, maybe that's the point. Solar roadways, they're great, as long as you don't want to drive on your roads during the day. And yeah, I'm not the only one who's done some back-of-the-envelope calculations and worked out that their claims are simply batshit crazy. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I simply cannot wait to hear from you loud-ass birds on the flippity flop. And a quick thank you to my Patreons who get early access, bonus material, an ad-free experience, and help keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. I couldn't have done this road trip without you guys, and I thank you. <laughs> Solar frickin' roadways? Yeah, no, we're not actually gonna go over that. That was... Uh... <sighs> Let's do this. I'm staring straight into the sun. There we go. You can get a little closer now. <clears throat> yeah, so. You've got to be kidding me. I mean, we've only got, we're only generating 380 watt hours a day. I, to heat these things is just ridiculous. It's almost a showstopper right with the LEDs. You're going to need at least an order of magnitude more power generated, but we're not. We're not close to that. But they claim that they can then store it in the virtual grid and then pull that energy back out at night to drive the LEDs and all the other stuff as if it's some sort of magical storage medium, the grid. It's not. This is Solar Power 101. Oh, this guy has a master's degree in electrical engineering. This is basic stuff. The grid doesn't store energy like that. It's use it or lose it. Solar Roadways has duped the US taxpayer out of almost a million dollars and gullible sats out of another two. However, while I was reading the history of all of this, I found this Wired article from 2010 where they state this. 
We've gotten estimates from the universities for developing the glass, and it will cost about $50 million to complete the research and get ready for production, said Brusel. Hi, we're Scott and Julie Brusel, the co-inventors of Solar Roadways. If we could get part of that, it would get us going and help us finish our research and development. Whoa, they want $50 million just to complete the development of the glass? I thought they were ready to almost start making these things and like set up factories to make them in every country in the world. Now we need to bring in a team of the best and brightest people to help us improve it, streamline production and move us forward. To enable our vision, we'll need to build manufacturing facilities in every state in the US and nearly every country in the world. Now, to be honest, the number of $50 million sounds about right to work out if such a material exists. That is, if a material exists with the correct mechanical, transmission, weather resistance, and so on properties to be suitable for a road surface. Maybe some sort of exotic laminar composite of sapphire, glass, and maybe some organic polymer too. Although that would kind of defeat Brusel's whole argument about not using oil industry chemicals. Asphalt has gone up so much because it's petroleum based. I don't believe we're going to have the ability to build asphalt roads in 50 years. Because most of the feedstocks for industrial scale polymers come from you guessed it, the oil industry. I mean, look, the exotic materials that we use for mobile phone screens are some of the highest performance glasses we have. And let's be real, you drop them from a couple of meters onto a hard surface and it's curtains. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, not good. it's not very good. Well, the front is uh, completely shattered. Yeah, back's a little more damaged too, wow. Or, if you want to see how durable these things are, try rubbing your mobile phone on a current road surface. Just to get some clue as to which is the harder and more durable material. Or, just to give you some feel for how long a glass road surface would remain optically transparent. But let's just say the material can be made. You are still barely starting to make this a viable idea in that you now have to be able to manufacture this very exotic material at least as cheaply as existing blacktop, which is basically composed of granite rocks, which are pretty cheap, and some evil black goo that's left after distilling crude oil, which is also pretty cheap. And they were claiming that they only need a million dollars just to start production of these solar roadways in every country in the world. If we're successful, you'll still see this technology pop up everywhere and it'll create hundreds of thousands of jobs worldwide. Thank you very much. When they don't have merely one of the materials that they're going to make the solar roadways out of, one that they estimated would cost about $50 million just to see if it could be made. The crazy thing is, though, these people didn't just give them the $1 million they asked for, but $2 million all based on a prototype for a solar roadway that only works during the night and which so far they have failed to show generating a single watt of electricity.